start. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen only mode. Hello everyone, this is uh, Steve Namath of AM from iPass. I'm the uh, Senior Director for our Supplier Relationship teams here at iPass. Uh, essentially that's all for our commercial roaming and for our, our uh, technical teams. Um, today I'm going to be giving the presentation on our Q1 network update. Um, before we jump in to the details actually about the network, we just wanted to run through some of the terminology and the definitions that we use when we talk about the network. So you can see on this slide here, we have three categorizations. Uh, the first ones are commercial hotspots. So these are typically commercial public venues such as hotels, airports, in-flight connectivity, retail stores, cafes, and so forth, um, where a user can connect to Wi-Fi. Typically, there's some level of, of friction or, or payment involved. So you may have to, for example, give your, uh, your, your personal information. Uh, in order to register for the for access to the Wi-Fi hotspot, or may actually have to to make a payment uh, for use of the hotspot. Um, our second categorization is a community hotspot. So this is uh, typically a residential hotspot in somebody's home, where the access point, the modem inside somebody's home, uh, is broadcasting to uh, SSIDs. Uh, one is uh, for the personal use of the homeowner, and the second one is a is a public. Uh, SSID that people can roam onto, and that is typically the SSID that iPass uh, has access to. Okay, and then the third and final categorization is what we call open access. So these are free hotspots uh, that able iPass is able to curate into the network. So effectively, we're taking any of the friction out of the out of the hotspot when it comes to connecting to that hotspot and and uh, making it automatically part of our network. Um, what we're showing here on this next slide, we're just tracking the growth of our hotspots over the last four years. So you can see where we were back in 2014 at 2.2 million, and uh, currently today we're, we're touching on the cusp of uh, reaching 65 million hotspots. And then here we just have um, a graph you know, of the regional representations of where the hotspots are. So you can see in Europe, it's uh, marginally larger than the Americas. Uh, so we're touching uh, nearly 22 million in Europe and 21 million in the Americas. Uh, and then you can see where the rest of the hotspots are around the, uh, around the globe, okay? So today, um, those 65 million hotspots you know, are in uh, 160 plus uh, countries uh, around the world. And then next, we, we just wanted to talk about the different verticals. Um, would it be useful for you to see where these hotspots are in terms of uh, places like airports? So we, you know, we, today we have uh, more than 800 airports inside the footprint. Um, In-flight connectivity is growing uh, very fast for us at the moment. So today we're enabled on 3,000 aircraft globally. Uh, trains, uh, also another important vertical for us, uh, so 400 plus trains. And then local businesses, uh, 20 million. And then hotels, uh, they are an extremely important vertical for us. Uh, we see a lot of usage running through the hotels. Um, and we are today um, active or enabled in more than 80,000 hotels around the globe. And then finally, community hotspots. Uh, we're approaching 40 million hotspots uh, today. And then we thought it would also be useful to share some of the uh, the operators um, you know that we work with. So I think as as most people you probably know, iPass uh, doesn't actually physically go out and build hotspots. Um, we are roaming with operators uh, like the ones that you see here. Um, so we had the rights to roam onto those hotspots, and then we aggregate all the hotspots to make it part of the iPass solution Smart Connect. And we'll run through a little bit in terms of uh, the different verticals that we have. Uh, so in terms of our in-flight um, Wi-Fi connectivity today, then we're active on, on more than 3,000 aircraft, as I mentioned earlier, and we're working with more than uh, 20 airlines today. Uh, we're putting a lot of focus on this area. We'll talk about the roadmap a little bit later. Uh, you can see down the bottom of this slide some of the partners. These are the technology systems integrators that we're working with. So. You know, our longest relationship and one of the most established players in this space is GoGo. 
uh, and we've been working with them for close to 10 years. Uh, Panasonic is also well established. Uh, United is another one that um, we started working with back in 2016, and we've just about started to, to roll out uh, their fleet as well this quarter. And then hospitality. So I'm, I'm just sharing some of the brands that iPass is enabled in. So you can see many of the leading brands around the globe uh, that we're active in uh, as well. And on trains, um, whilst we, we talk about 400 plus trains, uh, we do see a lot of usage, um, you know, running through these uh, these train operating companies today. Uh, so there's a bit of focus to add more as well. Um, and then I'll, I'll talk a bit about the roadmap, uh, particularly on in-flight connectivity. So you know, I, I shared, you know, where we are active today on those uh, 3,000 aircraft and the 20 plus airlines. Um, and we just started to roll out now with uh, the United fleet. So I believe we're uh, up to around 500 jets out of a possible 750 uh, aircraft uh, today. So we've gone into a beta uh, phase uh, with certain customers. Um, we're also on the cusp of right now rolling out another an additional uh, I think it's 11 airlines uh, with another one of our partners, Panasonic. Um, so you'll see that on the next uh, network update. Uh, those additional 11 airlines as well, which take will take us about 30 uh, airlines today. Um, and then we also have some other specific engagements um, in Europe uh, and in the Middle East uh, and in the US. So um, the targets that we sort of have you know, today are for the European Aviation Network. So we already have an existing partnership with Deutsche Telekom. We've made the investment in the infrastructure and for the in-flight Wi-Fi connectivity um, on several airlines and with the backhaul infrastructure for uh, Lufthansa, Austrian Airlines, and, uh, and Eurowings. Um, so we're right now we're sort of working on the integration effort uh, to bring those on board um, with Deutsche Telekom and, the, and their partners. Um, we're also working, uh, as I mentioned a minute ago, in, uh, in the Middle East uh, with some of the Tier 1 airline carriers uh, in the UAE, um, as well as in, uh, in Asia, uh, again, with, you know, with, uh, with some of the, uh, the, the Tier 1 um, transatlantic uh, airline carriers as well. Okay, and then finally in the U.S., um, we are also um, working uh, to see if we can enable more American airline jets um, through one of their systems in the greater partners as well. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. One, one thing I wanted to mention. Um, I may, I I I, I, I um, said that we already work with GoGo. So GoGo. Um, Whilst they've been sort of working internationally uh, for the last few years, uh, you know, a lot of their uh, inventory when it comes to aircraft is is US uh, based, uh, but they've been sort of changing their model and becoming more and more international over the last few years. So um, Japan Airlines is one example, is one where they've gone international, uh, but it's also, you know, public knowledge that they also work with BA. So we're also seeing if we can now uh, try to get BA enabled with the iPass solution. So here I'm, I'm just showing you some of the uh, the Panasonic airlines that I mentioned earlier, um, and it's just a continuation on this slide as well to what we're working on. But we'll launch first with, I believe it's 11 uh, new airlines, and then we'll be working to get the rest rolled out as well. Okay. Um, hospitality, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's uh, you know it's a big focus for us. It's been a core part of our business uh, since we've been doing co uh, Wi-Fi connectivity since 2001. So we work with many of the established systems integrators. Um, we're making a big effort right now to add more hospitality footprint, particularly in the US market. Uh, we've won some of the uh, the leading tier, tier one brands as well. Um, in Europe, and in uh, in Asia, um, I think our penetration when it comes to hospitality um, is a lot better. Um, we're, we're we're still working to improve, you know, pockets of, you know, or certain markets where our you know our coverage is not so good. In for, for example, in Asia, okay. So, just to sort of summarise, I mean, I I've talked 
largely about the network today. Uh, and then when it comes to the iPass strategy, uh, which is basically, you know, we sell unlimited, we want to be everywhere, and we want our the connectivity to be invisible. When we talk about the network, um, we're really covering the, the everywhere component. So effectively, it's important to us that we have a big enough network where we have hotspots in the strategic places, which is where the user is going to be. So the other parts, when we talk about unlimited, essentially is around how we do not, because Wi-Fi is truly sort of an unlimited license uh, spectrum. We are basically selling unlimited Wi-Fi uh, to our users. So it doesn't matter how much data you want to use or how much time or how many devices, it is truly unlimited, okay? And then the invisible part, so you know, iPass is not a, um, is not a network reseller as such. Um, we work with over 170 network operators around the globe in 160 plus countries, and we have hospitality and in-flight and community and so on. Um, but what we strive to do is basically, you know, aggregate all those networks and make it a part of our solution, which is basically incorporating it inside our, our technology platform, Smart Connect. Um, so when you, you think about iPass, I mean, whilst we have this network, and I think it's important for you to to understand, you know, what, how that network looks like and what we're working on in terms of roadmap, um, you know, we, we view it as part of the solution uh, for Smart Connect. Okay. So I believe that brings us to the end of the presentation. So I think we can open it up for questions. Um, if there's anything that um, comes to mind after the uh, webinar is finished, then feel free to contact us. There's a, a sales at ipass.com um, email here, or if you know anybody at ipass, feel free to reach out. Thank you. Hi, Alex, do we have any other questions coming through? Yeah, we have uh, one question from Chanda who asks, um, well, she asked for suggestions. She said her iPass never works on airlines uh, with GoGo. Uh, are there any suggestions? Yeah, so we have got um, a process if there's a problem with anybody connecting. Um, I don't know if, who Chanda works for, but basically if you can contact us, we can get this looked into and we'll get it basically put for our technical team so they can interrogate what's happening when you try to connect on GoGo, -Go. okay? We have a question from Elaine. She asks what the cost of this program is. Uh, I, I'm assuming the cost of the, the iPass service. So it really depends. Um, on the scale, so I mean, iPass has essentially you know, different go-to-markets and business models. So we sell to large enterprises. So really, you know, the price point is determined by the, the volume of users that are you know a part of the uh, the deal, so to speak. Uh, we also sell to you know non-enterprise guys. So if we're talking about large operators or equipment manufacturers or software vendors, um, the model and the usage behaviors. Um, are different as well. So we, we will look at basically um, you know, the business model that's required to make it work for that organization and try to be flexible, okay? But it, when we're talking about, you know, the standard enterprise type of model, it's typically a, a license fee, you know, per user per month, and it's unlimited access as well, okay? Uh, but I think we need to understand more about the uh, the use case that we're talking about um, as well, so maybe we can have a conversation, a follow up with uh, with Rhonda. Okay, can we get uh, Rhonda's details, Alex? Yep. Okay. We have a question from Joanna. She asks, "Are you able to share any timeline to, uh, for Eurowings getting it getting integrated with IFAS?" Uh, so. We have a call next week with Deutsche Telekom and their technology partners, which are in Marsat and Lufthansa systems. Um, we have to go through some of the, the technical um, mythology for how we would integrate with their, their network. So I think coming out of that call next week, we'll have clarity as to how it looks. Based on what we know, it's not actually particularly complex to do. I think it's just basically getting into the uh, into the work prioritization. So Joanne, I mean, um, if we can get your details, like we can follow up with you, you know, at the end of next week. My, you know, our aspiration is basically that we would like to have the service online 
um, in early Q2, uh, but we've got to you know vet that with uh, with Deutsche Telekom and the uh, the other technology partners first. Okay. Uh, so we have a few questions regarding the issue with GoGo. Um, Tracy asks, it was my understanding that there is a known issue with GoGo and a conflict with iPass. Do you have any update on this? No, I mean, we, we continuously work with GoGo in terms of service improvement. So we're spending a lot of time, and this is my team particularly, uh, from a network integration perspective and network support, you know, to try and sort of iron out any any bugs in the service and then try to improve service performance. I don't know which particular area, you know, we're talking about here, but that's sort of like an, you know, an ongoing process with, with GoGo and in fact with all the other providers uh, that we work with as well. Okay. Um, we have recently um, relaunched or, you know, made a, an improvement in the service um, through the, you know, how the, uh, the capture screens work in the US. And we've seen some positive results in that respect. I'm not sure if that what is what you know we're, we're talking about here, but the, uh, the the user experience and the time to authenticate seems to have improved a lot uh, through some recent changes around the capture screen. Uh, I'm not sure if that's what we're uh, we're referring to here, though. But again, if we can get some more details about this, we can follow up. We have a question from Sean. He asks, what is your timeline for integrating with GoGo to enable their new international in-flight footprint on iPass? So I, I think we're probably talking about uh, BA. Uh, is that right? But if that's the case, um, at the moment, GoGo has um, launched, um, it's a sponsored access model with Visa. It's the only thing that's sort of active today where you get an hour's service. Um, right now, we're, we're trying to have a direct conversation with BA uh, to figure out, you know, when they could basically incorporate or enable iPath on the service. So we don't have a timeline just yet. We're just trying to basically get the uh, the meetings lined up with BA to have that discussion. Alex, is that Sean from uh, HP? It is, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll contact Sean directly as well okay sure there's been a number of requests to um, follow up on, on some of the gogo -go responses so we'll track everybody's name that's asking about it um, so that we make yeah. sure we follow up okay other than that we have not had any more questions can we give it one minute and then uh, I think we can close out Sure. So whilst we're doing that, so just to summarize, I think there are some specific GoGo -Go questions that we need to, to follow up on. I, I sort of can't answer everything in terms of, I, I don't know the details behind what people are asking or what the experience is, but we'd like to get that addressed. Um, so we'll get the details, you know, the people that are asking and follow up for sure. Um, and I think Rhonda, uh, you were asking about the, the I guess it's sort of like the commercial models, the business models. So we'll, we'll have a specific conversation, you know, with you and bring the uh, the, the salesperson into that conversation. Um, and then, Joanne, if I, I'll get your details and I'll and uh, send you a specific update on uh, on EAN um, as well. I think we'll by the time we do the next update, uh, we'll have some positive news to report, and it's uh, similar for BA. Uh, Sean, if you're still listening, I'll, I'd like to have a conversation with you about that one specific uh, specifically as well so I'll, I'll write to you uh, later today okay have we had any more questions coming Alex uh, yes we have one more from Sean he asks uh, how many of your 64 million hotspots are commercial versus community versus open so commercial hotspots we have I believe it's, and keep me honest, I believe it's about two and a half million. We do have this breakdown. Um, and then the community hotspots is about 38 million. I think it's approaching 40. Uh, so I think that leaves us with a balance of about you know 20 million uh, are curated hotspots. Okay. So is that roughly sort of approaching 40 million for, for community, um, 20 million for curated, and then just over two and a half million, I believe, for uh, commercial.
Jacqueline asks if we'll be sharing the PowerPoint slide. Yes, I believe yeah. um, they get a, a copy of the recording and I think, are we sending out the, uh, the PowerPoint as well or can we to Jeff or anybody yeah. else that's asking? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have a question from Joanna. Uh, what is meant by a curated hotspot? Sure. So a curated hotspot, essentially, it's um, a free hotspot. So iPath technology is able to bring that into the network as well. So effectively, the user doesn't have to go through any sort of friction um, in order for that hotspot, in order to log into that hotspot uh, as well. So that's stuff that we've been, you know, that's inside our our, our technical capabilities as well. Um, one other comment, I think the other feature that we've added to this um, to sort of bring more value to the user um, is in the area of security. So trying to make hotspots more secure is something that iPass has been working on for, you know, um, since day one effectively. And for example, we do things like support corporate VPNs. But the thing that we did about a year and a half ago, as we launched this uh, new service called a last mile VPN, which effectively um, is overlaying a, you know, a VPN service between the user and the, uh, the access point in the last mile to try and sort of make that more secure. So for example, um, when we talk about a curated hotspot, it could be a free hotspot. You know, the question mark here there is, you know, how secure, how safe is that hotspot? Well, what we're doing is overlaying the last mile VPN to add an additional layer of security so that we try to protect against things like, you know, hacker attacks or, or man in the middle attacks. Okay. Do you have anything else, Alex? Yes, one more. Um, do connectivity issues, uh, complaints come up often? Uh, well, we have, well, we have a customer care and a customer success team um, that's focused basically on making sure that our customers are happy with the level of service and the value that they're extracting from, from iPass. So we will get tickets raised on us uh, that we will triage. Um, what we'll find sometimes is that, you know, the errors tend to fall into different categories. It can be, you know, user issues. Uh, so it could be a device issue. It could be a username password issue. Um, it could be a VPN issue, or we could find that there is a problem somewhere in in the service, um, and so it may manifest that there is a network issue with a hotspot, uh, and we have a network team that will go interrogate that without, you know, with whoever the provider is, uh, and try to fix it. Uh, so yeah, so that's just, you know, for us, it's, it's part of our process to try and make the service better. Uh, that we'll get, you know, customer care tickets or calls, you know, coming through, and we'll interrogate and try to fix and improve the service. Okay. The thing that we've actually been um, as part of our roadmap for this year, uh, quality end to end is from a customer experience perspective, very important to us and a top priority and something we're focusing on. So we're not just talking about network quality, but how we can actually make the whole service more robust. So we've been doing things in our technology between the connection manager and you know some of the new connection management technology uh, that we've been working on in the last two years to improve the service performance as well. And we've seen some, some you know, some promising signs this year already uh, in terms of uh, how seamless the service is and what the quality of service improvement looks like as well. Hey Steve, we've got a couple more um, following up the uh, customer care line. Um, Jacqueline asks if it's 24-7, uh, is it available online uh, and or via phone and is uh, and do we offer live chat for customer support? Oh, so it's a little bit out of my wheelhouse. I know that our customer care is follow us on 24 by 7, 3, 6, 5. Um, I know tickets can be raised, uh, for example, by the client. Uh, so if you are basically experiencing an issue, then you can report, you know, there's a help fun function inside the connection manager and basically you can raise a ticket and send logs and we can interrogate and follow up with the with the user as well. Um, I'm not sure if there's live chat. Again, you know, our customer care lead um, is based in the same office that I am. So I can I can find out what the capabilities are and we can come back. Um, can we take, sorry, the, the name of the gentleman, Alex, is 
Hi, Alex. What's the name of the, the gentleman asking? Sorry, uh, Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Okay. Um, we can go back to him with some, some more details on what the, uh, the customer success and customer care model looks like as well. Okay. Sure. Um, and then we have a question from Sean. Uh, what should we expect from IPATH in terms of connection success? Um, so we, we look at it at different levels. So we have a network connection success metric, um, and we're recalibrating this one you know, at the moment because we get something like a raw connection success rate that just takes into account all the errors. So it could be a user error, it could be a network error, it could be, you know. So typically what we're seeing in that recently, you know, we're, we're going above, you know, a 60%, I believe, sort of globally. Um, and that's, you know, that's taking into account everything. Now, there are different pockets. You know, if we look at particular networks, for example, like hospitality, it tends to perform pretty well. Uh, so, you know, I've, I've seen, you know, historically that our connection success rates, for example, inside hotels can be as high as, as 90%, uh, for instance. And on certain operator networks, you know, we're, we're up around 70%. But uh, I believe today uh, we're trending around the 50, 60% mark. It'd be interesting to see what happens uh, as we're going through this, you know, end-to-end -end quality improvement as well um, and what happens to that connection success rate as well. We're also seeing... Um, an evolution in the network technologies and the way I would liken it just to people on this call is uh, if you think about the 3G to 4G to you know eventually 5G technology migration Wi-Fi connectivity is sort of going through a similar thing um, so we're right now sort of on that journey and we're seeing some good results in terms of customer experience and connection success rates uh, jumping for uh, up to 80% in certain cases on the new network technologies as well. So we're, we're on a program right now to evolve the network to the latest technologies. Um, and it will take a while, uh, but you know, to, we want to evolve the, to the latest Wi-Fi technologies, uh, which one of the benefits will be the, uh, the improved uh, connection success rates. Okay. We have no more questions at the moment. Okay. Well, folks, I think you know where we are. If you, if you have my email address, um, or if you want to contact the sales at ipass.com or, or, or Alex, or if you have an account manager, and feel free to reach out. Uh, don't hesitate. Okay. Okay. Well, has anything else come through, Alex, or should we uh, close out? Nope, oh, that's it. Okay, very good. Well, thanks everyone again, and uh, you have a good day. Bye.